But first, how will NASA's mission change under President Trump and a Republican Congress that helps decide where money should go? Some big changes could be in store for space exploration and the mission set into place now that could well stretch beyond the Trump era. Miles O'Brien has the story for our weekly segment about the leading edge of science and technology. The balcony at Congressman John Culberson's office on Capitol Hill offers a sweeping panorama of Washington. But the Republican from Houston is usually looking higher. It's right there, Mercury. Mars is going to appear right here. If we go this way, of course, there's Orion. Uh, Sirius is going to appear right here. Culberson has more than a hobby level interest in space. He chairs the House Appropriations Subcommittee that oversees NASA. In his ninth term, he is riding high as the Trump administration embraces his strategy for exploring space. NASA has been underfunded for far too long. They've been short-sticked by previous administrations, this had past administration. And I'm very excited and pleased to see President Trump recommend uh, enough funding for NASA as a whole. President Trump apparently sees NASA as a priority. He's made passing references to space in his inaugural address. We stand at the birth of a new millennium, ready to unlock the mysteries of space. And in his speech to Congress. American footprints on distant worlds are not too big a dream. The Trump administration is proposing only a 1% reduction in NASA's $19 billion annual budget. Hardest hit programs, Earth science and education. But at a time when the federal scientific enterprise is facing deep, unprecedented cuts, the space agency may have dodged a missile. Mr. Trump's space advisors include former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, and former Congressman Bob Walker, who served as chairman of the subcommittee that oversees NASA. Newt has had several conversations uh, with uh, uh, Trump and with uh, Vice President Pence. Um, and um, uh, uh, both of them are space cadets. Uh, and, um, uh, and there are other fairly high-ranking people in the White House who are also space cadets. In this case, space cadet is a compliment. Walker says the White House would like NASA to get out of low Earth orbit, leaving that realm to private enterprise. Beyond that, the space agency takes a role that increases with the distance from Earth. The administration is also focused on humans returning to the moon. I think the moon is an important step on the way to Mars. I think you have to uh, have some experience in a very hostile environment um, uh, where you develop some of the technologies that you need to exist on Mars before you actually head to Mars. For Congressman Culberson, that is all well and good, but he believes the most important greenlit mission is aimed at this object, the icy moon of Jupiter, Europa. The Europa Clipper was approved by the Obama administration and Congress in 2015 more than 10 years after Culberson began obsessively pushing NASA to go there. Europa has always fascinated him. Beneath the ice is a salty ocean. How much? He answers the question with a poster on foam core he keeps in his office. This is all the water on Earth, both fresh and salt, and all the water on Europa. This is a free-floating ice shell, and there's two to three times more water on Europa than there is on Earth. Scientists find this tantalizing because no matter how far down they explore in our oceans, they find all kinds of living creatures. And with that much water out there today in our solar system, it begs the question, could there be life within that ocean? Jet Propulsion Laboratory astrobiologist Kevin Hand is in line to be the project scientist for a NASA mission to land on Europa by about 2030. That lander would be preceded by an orbiter slated for launch in 2022. The orbiter is designed to capture stunning imagery and detailed science about the salts and any organic compounds on the surface and use radar to look beneath at the boundary between the ice and the ocean. All of this will help them determine where to land. We'd love to melt through the ice and reach the ocean directly, but based on the evidence we have, Europa's ice shell does serve as a relatively good window into the ocean below. We could, perhaps by sampling the surface, also be sampling ocean material 
and thereby also be potentially grabbing a sample that could have some little Europa organisms. But for many years, NASA did not seem interested in Europan krill. The NASA administrator under George W. Bush, Mike Griffin, thwarted Culberson's first attempt to land on Europa. It was a mission called the Jupiter Icy Moons Orbiter, and it was canceled in 2006 to pay for completion of the International Space Station. When Mike Griffin canceled the Europa mission last decade, it scarred me so badly, I swore I wouldn't let the bureaucrats cancel this mission again. So today, the Europa orbiter and lander is the only mission it is illegal for NASA not to fly. You heard right. Culberson made the Europa orbiter and lander missions the law of the land in 2015. But exploring Europa is challenging and expensive. NASA managers complained their plate was already too full with the space station and an extensive campaign to explore Mars. And the focus on Mars is sustained by the goal of eventually sending humans to the surface. Europa is only a destination for robots, and hardy ones at that. Lethal radiation levels ensure no human can ever visit. It makes the mission less attractive to the powerful astronaut side of the house at NASA. But in this War of the Worlds, Mars has met its match. The fact that uh, people are talking about Europa right now is a, is a result of Chairman Culbertson's uh, interest in it. And the fact is that he has caused NASA to say, uh, you know, if that's what Ch Chairman Culbertson wants, that's what Chairman Culbertson gets. <laughs> Culbertson isn't stopping there. He has written a 50-year plan for NASA that includes a spacecraft that can go 10% the speed of light for humanity's first interstellar mission to the nearest Earth-like star. The launch date is 2069, 100 years after the first moon landing. I've always wanted to restore NASA to the glory days of Apollo, as you and I remember as kids. I want to see NASA go above and beyond the glory days of Apollo. Culberson is all about making NASA great again. But watch what happened in the Oval Office after the president signed the authorization bill for the space agency's current budget. Mr. President, if I may, yes. just as Americans remember that President Eisenhower was the father of the interstate highway system, with your bill signing today and your vision and leadership, future generations will remember that President Donald Trump was the father of the interplanetary highway system. Well, that sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> First, we want to fix our highways. We're going to fix our highways. Mr. President, we're going to fix our highways. Yes. Europa and Mars may beckon, but for politicians, it's never wise to ignore the potholes, even when surrounded by people who care more about black holes. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Miles O'Brien in Washington.